Okay, so today's lesson is all about negative numbers. We've already talked about unsigned integers, that means positive numbers, and we've talked about sign and magnitude um, as a way of just representing numbers to say, is it positive or negative? But today we want to talk about two's complement, which is a much, much, much better way of representing negative numbers, and we want to understand why. So, we've discussed them before, but we want to make sure that we understand how to do it and why it's better. So, um, we have said, let's get um, a camera open and point it in the right place so that we can see what's going on. Normal positive integers can be represented with the least significant bit over on the right. As we move to the left, it doubles in value, and we keep doubling until we get to as many bits as we need. And at GCSE, we stop at 8 bits. In reality, the, the computers sat in front of you are 64-bit um, processors, so there's going to be 64 bits. So the most significant bit is 2 to the power 64, which is a very, very big number. But we only have to deal with 8-bit um, numbers. If it's a negative number, we said there's two ways of doing it. We could just get rid of that most significant bit and have a bit that says, is it negative or not? The problem with that, well, there's two. One is the numbers can only be a maximum of 127, because if we have 64 plus all of these, we're going to get 127. And there's another big problem. So if you remember, using sine and magnitude, it is possible to have two versions of zero. And that is always bad, because mathematically, plus zero and negative zero are the same, but in terms of a computer comparing them, they are completely dif um, different. And that's going to lead to bugs in your code. So a much better way of doing it was 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. This time, instead of just negative if it's 1, that 1 means negative, now it's minus 128 if it's a 1. So all the positive numbers are the same. Anything up to 127 is just going to be the same as it was. But all the negative numbers are slightly different. So let's get back to the slides and remind ourselves how we can do this. What is the smallest value that we can have? The largest negative number that we can have. Yes, you're absolutely right. The largest negative number is just minus 128 without adding on any positive values to make it less negative. Well done, that's the largest negative value. So that's actually a larger range for two's complement than you can have with sine and magnitude. Why? Because sine and magnitude has two possible values for zero. So slightly more values can be represented with two's complement. Um, yeah, we talked about this here. This is the largest positive value and the largest negative value. Um, it is a clever mathematical um, solution because addition works, um, shifting works, um, and let's prove it. Um, I don't think it's helpful to do this on the PowerPoint. I think it's probably more helpful to explore what these are on here. So let's see, we've got 7 and minus 5. Let's work out what these are. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and minus 128. If we want 7, yeah, we can add 4, 2, and 1 together to get plus 7. And then the slide said we want minus 5. How on earth do we get minus 5 from here? Well, there's two ways to work this out. Um, if we want to get minus 5, the way to do this is either to say, right, start with 128, and add on, what do I need? I need to add on 123. That sounds like a bit of a headache. How do I get 123 out of here? I could do it. Instead, I'm just going to ignore the negative number for a, for, a, for, a, for a minute and do binary 5. That's 4 and 1. I can do that. So we have to flip the bits, which means invert them, put them through a not gate, make the 1 zeros and the zeros 1s. We invert them, and then we add 1. How do we add 1? 
So I'm just going to write down here, invert, add one. Um, so I can just add a one there. And let's just check that that is the same as what the PowerPoint slide said. All the ones except for the 148. All ones except for, oh sorry, the four. Did I get that wrong? Or did I just say the wrong value? Yeah, it's a four instead of an eight. My mistake. So now, this value is minus five. We could prove it if we want. Hun minus 128, adding on all of these, should give us minus 5. If we then take this column, sorry, this row, and add each bit separately, let's see, 1 add 1 is 1. 1 add 1 is 1. 0 add 1 is, no it's not, messed up, haven't I? 1 add 1 is 2. So 1 add 1 is 2, and we have to write that, as zero carrying the one over to the next bit. Now I've got one add one at the carry, which is three. How do we add th three? So three, one, 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 is one, carry that one. One add the carry is two. Zero add one add one is two. Zero add one add one is two. 0 add 1 add 1 is 2. 0 add 1 add 1 is 2. 0 add 1 add 1 is 2. We've lost that from over here. It's just overflowed. If I want to do 7, take away 5, I should be left with 2. And look, it's just magically worked. It's really clever. 2's complement just works for addition. And subtraction is just another form of addition. It's just adding a negative number. And it works. It's magic. Well, it's not magic, it's logic. So how do we get started on this? Um, here we go. Two empty grids. Fill the top row of each grid with the binary placeholders. This is two's complement, remember. Least significant bit. I'm pressing shift and tab to move to the left. So all of these are the same for two's complement for unsigned and for sign and magnitude. The only difference is that for two's complement, it's not 128 like unsigned. It's not just positive or negative like sign and magnitude. It's minus 128. So I've just done that. And your job is to carry on with the smallest value and the largest value. So let's go through one of the examples for activity two. Six bits means that we can only have 0, 0, 0, that's 3, 4, 5, 6. So the minimum pattern in 2's complement is going to be negative, negative what? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, minus 32 is going to be the minimum value. The maximum pattern in 6 bits, well it can't be a negative number, but all of these 5 bits are going to be ones. How many unique patterns are there? Well, this time, if you've got six bits, how many unique patterns? What does that mean? Well, it means if you go all the way from six zeros through every possible combination, I'm not going to write them all out, but we did do this, didn't we, in our very first P lesson, and it took forever. If you want to work out how many unique patterns there are, you can do 2 raised to the power 6, which is equal to what? So 2 raised to the power 6 is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. There's 64 possible combinations of zeros and ones. Half of them are negative, or just, and then half of them are positive if you count 0 as a positive number. You need to do the same for 5 bits or 12 bits. Bearing in mind that for the GCSE, you only ever have to deal with up to 8 bits. So this is harder than you need for GCSE. So let's go through activity 3. We've got two numbers here. Remember, the CPU doesn't know if it's 2's complement or not. It's just going to follow the same rules for addition, regardless of whether it's unsigned or 2's complement. So 
let's get the camera and work through this just here. Hopefully we can see what's going on. All right, so I'm going to do the second one down here. So I'm reading from the right to the left. One, zero, zero, and then one, 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 one. The number underneath it is just a zero and then lots of ones. Before we do this binary addition, let's try and work out what these values are. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, minus 128. The programmer knows it's two's complement. The CPU doesn't. It doesn't care. It operates in exactly the same way regardless of if it's unsigned or if it's two's complement. It's only the compiler and the program code that tells the difference. So we've used a calculator to work this out. Let's do the faster way to prove that it does actually work. Let's invert the bits and add one. So invert the bits. 0, 1, 1, 0. Add one to get one here. Don't try and skip ahead. Always do all of your working out. That should be, oh, what have I done here? Where did that come from? This should be the value in um, so we inverted the bits, we added one to get seven and we had to remember to put the minus sign in. We've proved that this is minus seven. Our next number, invert the bits and add one, invert the bits, and add one means we're going to end up with minus two. And if we want to add these values together, minus seven adds minus two, if you've got a number line, that's zero. You've got your positive values, your negative values. We're going to go more and more negative from minus 7, taking away 2, you're going to get to minus 9. That's where we want to end up. Lots of waffle, lots of scribble. How do we actually do this then? On here. 0 add, oh sorry, we're doing this one. 0 add 1 is 1. 0 add 1 is 1. 0 add 1 is 1. 1 add 1 is 1 with a little carry. So I'm going to put a little carry down here to remember. 1 add 1, sorry, is 2. So 0 carry 1. Then I've got 3, which is 1 carry 1. I'm pressing control and equals. And then I've got 1 add 1 add 1 is 3 which is 1 carry 1, control equals. 1 add 1 add 1 is 3, which is 1 carry the 1. And here we have a slight problem, because we've got 3, which is ah 1, and I need to carry a 1 over to the next bit, but it's, it's lost. There's an overflow. But actually, that overflow doesn't matter for a negative number. So we were expecting a minus 9. Is that what we've got? Well, invert the bits gives us a 1 here, which would be 1, 2, 4, 8. Add 1 to 8, and I've got 9. Put on the minus sign. It does actually work. And you can check it if you want by doing minus 128. Add 64. Add 32. Add 16. Add 4. Add 2. Add 1. And you'll end up with minus 9. So that means when we get to the next part of uh, this task, activity 3, almost impossible to do this when it's not lined up one after the other. Write it in your revision notebook. Do all the working out in your revision notebook. It doesn't matter which one goes on top and which one goes underneath, but it does matter that they are lined up. The least significant bit should be underneath the least significant bit. Take your time. Add them together. The result is in binary. And the check 
means convert that to deanery, convert that to deanery, add them together, and work out if you get the right answer. So when you've finished all the activities, I've put a little extension on here, but don't worry too much about this. The important thing is that you've worked out how to do binary addition. You can try and make a program that will do your binary addition for you if you like, um, but it's completely optional at this stage. Make sure it's saved and submitted to half term two, data two on the VLE. Well done.